um, letting go of your insecurities about your work. <laughs> As a science teacher, I was comfortable with what I was doing. I was comfortable using the language that I'm used to using, but now trying to explain to somebody else who might not know what I'm talking about. And that's the thing that I'm here to encourage is that whoever gets your work, it isn't always, oh, hell, I teach physics, so therefore the other physics teachers will also read this and we also know what we're talking about. Or the English teachers, that you're all going to be great studies of all these great um, writers. No, sometimes it's going to be an Eng English teacher's reading my work or a science teacher's reading that person's work or you know math teachers or elementary school teachers or this, that, and the other thing, reading your work. You have to give it away to somebody else and say, look at this, please. I think any of us that have started the writing, we just want someone to read it and tell us, okay, you're on the right track. Okay, you're getting it. Okay, this is definitely where you're going. And I remember when I was at that point, I just wanted an NBCT to read it and go, mm-hmm, yep, that's it, exactly. And what I realized is that Nobody can tell me that because they don't know my kids. They don't know these kids at this time in this setting. They only know the kids that they're working with. And so what I'm writing for them to give me feedback and say, yes, this is on the right track, it's really, it, it's really irrelevant. The apprehension is going to be there. You're going to be scared. You're not going to want to let go of it. Lots of times people have this whole, okay, would you read this for me? And they're gripping it so tight that you can't rip it out of their hands. And it's like pry your fingers away. You have to give it up. It's, you have to let go. It's almost like, you know, as Marlin is hanging on to the whale's tongue in Finding Nemo, you have to let go. Giving it away to an elementary school teacher and giving it away to a social studies teacher in junior high caused me a little more angst because, well, they gave me the feedback that I needed. I was using too much jargon. I was using too much of the cliches. I was using too much of the, well, when you go into the lab, well, what do you mean by going into the lab? What does that mean to you compared to what does it mean to me? When you're thinking about writing for National Board, it really is about these kids, this time, this setting. I want to make a t-shirt that says that. And we could all walk around as teachers wearing that shirt. Because really, the truth is, is that I can talk to anybody I want at a small group meeting. I can talk to anybody at a large group meeting. But it's the people in my building that know those kids. And they know what's happening in this setting. They understand the context of what I'm teaching in. And so when I talk to them about what my goals are, they're able to kind of have that perspective of knowing how that relates to my kids and maybe helping me come up with some of that language to describe that. When I'm looking at my standards, I might want to see someone sit with someone in my same certificate area. And when I'm looking at the questions, I can do both because there are some language, there are some language in the questions that is um, the same across certificates. Like I can think of right now, relevant. I know I've seen that word in questions no matter what certificate I look at. Or things like objectives and goals. Those words are universal in this process. As I type up all the questions that were in my portfolio. And then I had entry one, here's my questions. Entry two, here's my questions. So as I started writing, the questions were already there. And so the person reading it could kind of have it fenced in. Oh, this is kind of what they're answering. Oh, this is kind of what they're answering. There are parts of this that are alike for all of us. The core props the five core propositions, no matter what certificate area you're in, no matter what school you work in, no matter what outfit you're wearing today, everybody has to address the five core propositions. And the language in those, all of us that have read them, know that the language in there is rich and deep and it is not something that you sit down for an easy read. You have to take it chunk by chunk and talk through it. So those are the parts that you wanna get multiple perspectives on. That then becomes the hard part. If you trust them, if you respect them, hopefully you can then get the idea of, is this person just feed me a line, say, whew, this is not good, but I don't know how to say it's not good. Is this not good because they just don't like me? Or is this just not good and I need to fix these things? The other hard part is deal with, hey, that was really great. Okay, great. You know, seriously, what do I have to work with on that? I got nothing. The only thing that that person, that MBCT or that colleague can do is look at the scoring guide with me, look at the note taking guide, read my entry with me and really look for the evidence. People that you trust are going to give you honest, positive or negative feedback. People you respect will give you the feedback that you need. Really, it comes down to your professional judgment. It's your entry, they're your kids, it's your teaching practice. So you have to make the decision about what you're gonna cut, what you're gonna change, what you're gonna add. Uh, you have to go back to yourself, your core. Uh, it's, it's you. Remember, you're, it's you going out on the limb. It's you putting yourself out on the line. You can ask all these people. You can get great reviews over here. You can get poor reviews over there. But what is your essence? What do you feel about it? Take the good. Take the bad. Take the you know lukewarm. And reread it and think about it again. And sometimes you just have to take a shower or take a nap. And that's good advice for a national board teacher who's in their candidacy program of going, take a nap. Sometimes taking a nap helps you get those ideas. Oh, if I would have, I do that. And then you wake up and you just start writing.